I just found out that I got into a PhD program at Stanford University from a social media post but I'm already in the second year of my physics PhD at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I never applied in the first place. So how did I do it? Well, the last few weeks have been so busy in the PhD program, doing anything from applying to graduate fellowships to get independent funding for my research, to also simultaneously preparing for final exams. And in a moment of weakness, while trying to do anything but study for my final exams, I decided to scroll through LinkedIn Yes, I was that bored. And in between seeing random accomplishments from people I knew and also this one guy who decided he needed to make a giant essay about upgrading his town hall and clash of clans, I did love that post. I came across this, a post from a professor, Constantine Sedaris at the University of Southern California saying, after seven amazing years at the University of Southern California, I am excited to share that I will be joining the Department of Electrical Engineering at Stanford University in January, 2026. I'm eternally grateful to all my wonderful colleagues, friends, mentors at USC, and I look forward to staying in touch with all of you. Prospective PhD students interested in joining my research group should apply to Stanford's EE graduate program. And this is how I found out I got into Stanford, but how? Well, as I mentioned, that post is from Dr. Constantine Sedaris, who is a professor at USC. I had the pleasure to work with Dr. Sedaris for a summer in his lab at the University of Southern California, where, as you can see, here's his lab page. And there at the bottom, there's my name, summer 2023. What was I there doing in the summer 2023? Well, I was lucky enough to participate in an REU, or Research Experience for Undergraduates. Uh, the program I participated in was called the USC SURE program. It was sponsored by Amazon. To, these programs basically help undergrads grow, get research experience, and it helps them get into PhD programs. And I would participate in this program right here. Now, unfortunately, this program isn't running for the summer of 2026 because of government stuff, which sucks, but I hope it's able to come back soon. But these programs are awesome. And I recommend to basically any undergrad that they should do a program like this. I mean, I met so many amazing people. You basically just get paid to live in a place for a summer. I mean, I got paid $5,200 for the eight week program. Housing was covered, travel was covered. I had health insurance, food was essentially paid for during the program too. But I made so many amazing friends. They take you to do fun things. We just like went to Universal one day. Um, there's us messing around on the roof. All, all, so many awesome things. But the main thing you're there for is also do a research project with the professors. You can see Dr. Sedaris is right there. And I was able to kind of work with them for a summer. And now because of this, I fell in love with USC. I still miss you. Love you so much, USC. And from this, I applied there for grad school. Also, I got in with a fellowship and I was really considering going there for grad school. I really, really, really thought I might go there for grad school. Well, Dr. Sedaris, who if I went to USC, I probably would have worked with, is now moving to Stanford starting in January. So what would have happened in the universe where I decided to choose to go to USC and join his lab. Well, this is why I said I got into Stanford because in that universe that I mentioned, where I'm not at CU Boulder and I'm now at USC, I'm actually getting ready right now to move from Southern California to the Bay and transfer to Stanford. So can you just do that? Like, can I just decide that I'm going to Stanford? I mean, I feel like a lot of people would wish that they could just decide that they're going to Stanford. But in this case, yes, you actually can. I can just go to Stanford if I wanted to. And this happens more commonly than you think in a PhD program. This situation essentially is where the university is like, hey, we will take you at our university. And in exchange for you coming to our university, we obviously want to keep your lab. So all of your students that are in your lab right now, if they want to follow you to Stanford, we will guarantee that they can join you and come with you. So yeah, this essentially guarantees you admission into that school if you were in this situation where your advisor was moving labs to that school. But what about the case where you don't want to move with your professor? What if instead of moving to a different part of California, it can happen where your professor decides that he's moving to a different continent? What do you do in that case? Well, I guess first you still have the same options as you had before, where if you want to move with them, you can. It doesn't matter if it's halfway across the globe. That same situation will apply. You can move with the professor to a university in a different continent. But if you want to stay at university, which would be very understandable that you don't want to move maybe to Europe from the US to continue your PhD with this professor, then unfortunately you are going to have to find a new lab. There's not really much else that you can do about that. And it can be a tough situation for students because there's there really, yeah, there's not really anything you can do about it. And this is also why I wanted to talk about this, because this is not something that I realized could happen until I was very late into my PhD application process. 
The first time I learned about this was when I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go to grad school and I was talking to a current PhD student at MIT and he was in the aerospace department. And I basically asked him like, why did you choose MIT? Um, how did you get in here? Just kind of like a lot of basic questions. And he told me, he was like, well, actually originally I started my PhD at the University of Minnesota and my advisor got a position a couple of years into my PhD at MIT and he moved his lab here and I followed him and I moved with him and I was like, oh, you can just like, are you, do you have to follow him? Like, do you have to get in here? And he's like, well, yes. Like he's like, you still have to apply to the school, but you're gonna get in if you know what I mean. I was like, oh, I, I didn't realize that that was a thing that could happen. And still from then though, I didn't realize how common it could be because now I'm just a year and a half into my PhD and I've already encountered three different friends that I have here uh, experiencing the same situation. The first was a friend whose professor that he worked with for a couple years, he got a position in Australia and his professor decided that he was going to go to Australia. And my friend was like, well, I don't really want to move from Colorado to Australia. So I guess I'm going to find a new lab. And he actually had to kind of switch fields entirely and adapt. It's a very tricky situation, but it's something that just happens. There's another friend I have here who his professor has gotten a position in Austria, but he really does want to stay with him. So he's starting to think maybe I need to start uh, learning the language over there. And I think I might be moving to Austria, which I was like, all right, dude, that sounds sick. I hope that works out well. And then there's a third friend I have here who experienced a situation of, he was talking to a professor that said, hey, hold off one more semester. Next semester, I have funding for you and you're going to be able to join my lab. And he was like, great, that's awesome. And then all of a sudden, the professor told him, hey, just so you know, I'm out of here. I got a position in industry. I'm completely leaving academia and you're going to have to find something else. And he got screwed over a bit from that. So these things, like they happen more often than you think. So if you're applying to grad schools right now, is there anything that you can really do to prepare for the situation? Not really. And you can't really blame the professors for this either. I mean, it's not like they get a ton of warning that they're going to get accepted in a month to this position. They kind of just wake up one day and they're like, you got the job. And it's also not really their obligation to tell students like that. Oh, hey, just so you know, I'm applying to positions because you know how it goes. You apply to a ton of jobs and 99% of the time it like doesn't work out. So why would you go tell everyone every time you apply to something? I will say the only thing I think you can do is at least understand the probability of this happening, where if the professor you're working with is like an assistant professor at the university, it's the first university he's been at, pretty young professor, then it might be a little bit more probable that this could happen. So maybe a good question to ask yourself if you're getting ready to apply to grad schools and you think this is a professor you might want to work with, do you like them enough where if they were to move universities in a few years into your PhD, would you want to move with them? But yeah, I guess for me, it's weird to think that in the other timeline where I chose to go to USC, I would be getting ready right now to go to Stanford. So did seeing this make me feel like, oh my God, I could be going to Stanford right now. I can't believe it. What a missed opportunity. No, no, it didn't make me feel like that. I mean, first of all, she was ranked above Stanford by one place in the standings for my field. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, also, um, I chose to go to the university I'm at right now for so many more reasons than just a name. I felt like that CU provided me the best environment and best fit for the lifestyle that I wanted to live in grad school. And that's really the most important thing to think of when it comes to choosing university. You don't want to pick one just because of the name. You want to pick one because you think it's going to be a good fit for you. And because a PhD is a marathon, it's not a sprint, it's many years long. And you need to make sure that you're going to be able to get through all of those years. But I, I might still tell people that I got into Stanford. I don't know. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, much more consistent content coming after the new year. Happy holidays. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, it's been a busy semester here, but I look forward to getting much more consistent back on the content train. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment on your thoughts, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.